Yo, what's going on guys? We're going to be covering the Survival Hunter Mage Tower in this video. We're going to be fighting Xylem. This is a fairly difficult fight, so I'm going to be covering everything that you can possibly do to make your damage as high as possible because this will turn into a DPS check in phase 2. At the start, I was using no consumables in all Shadowlands gear, and I just could not seem to beat the phase 2 DPS check. So I'm going to be going over the correct talents, the gearing that you can get with just gold, and then a few world quests maybe if you just look around. You can find yourself some decent trinkets. I found some okay ones, but pretty much any extra damage that you can get your hands on You want to get your hands on it. So for the talents, I went alpha predator, gorilla tactics, Nazural Mending, Bloodseeker, and Binding Shot is very important for the second phase here, I'll explain it later, and Tip of the Spear and Wildfire Infusion. So now for the consumables, you're going to want to grab some Borellus Blood Sausage, some Veiled Augment Runes, and Greater Flask of the Currents, and then Superior Battle Potion of Agilities. And then if you want to get a little more damage, you can go buy some Shadow Core Oil, and then War Scroll of the Battle Shout, it'll give you 3% attack power, and then you can also pick up a War Scroll of Fortitude to give you 3% stamina. And you're not going to have to worry about buying drums as a hunter because you're going to have a Ferocity Pet, which you'll have Primal Rage, is it pretty much its own hero, 30% haste for 40 seconds, and then also you'll get with that 10% leech from you and your pet, which is very helpful. And that is from Predator's Thirst. Okay, so I'm going to be covering gearing, and the easiest way to go about it is buying the crafted gear off the auction house, in my opinion. It's going to come with a bunch of gem slots, and you can put things in it like One Nightmare Tear, the best meta gem. Now you can buy this necklace here, you put one of the Leviathan eyes in it. You can also put one of these gems, the Saber Eye, and you're pretty much going to just find as many item level 50 gear, because you can put certain enchants on those that you normally couldn't, and you can put... Um, you know, they have gem slots in them, like this cloak that I found for 200 gold. And then just the crafted gear. A bunch of gem slots. Enchants that you normally couldn't have. <clears throat> Six agility. Four agility. You know. Oh, there's two, there's also a thing you can... Living steel belt buckle. You can add a gem slot on your belt. And... Yeah, that's pretty much just what I have. I got these two trinkets actually earlier. It took me like five minutes. <clears throat> I just flew over and did two world quests and got these. They're better than my PvP trinkets, so it was it was worth it, I guess. Whenever you go in here, it obviously scales all your gear to item level 50, and whenever I was using Shadowlands gear, my agility was 299, and whenever I swapped to this Mage Tower crafted set that I got all up in, I then had 415 agility, and whenever I used my potions, I had 526. So there was a big difference in damage. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be looking over the fight here. It's fairly simple. We're just going to pop all of our augment runes and everything. And he's going to start out. We're going to start out with our pet taunting on um, automatic. This is going to be very important to have this on for the first phase. But you're going to actually turn it off during the second phase. So he's just going to cast frost bolts. He's going to pop this razor eyes. And you're going to jump up and then disengage. Give it just a second because it can be really buggy and it can mess up your disengage and you will die. I've learned that <laughs> from experience. And you're pretty much just going to damage him. You can interrupt him on Frostbolt now if your pet does get too low at the moment. But there's nothing really major going on here. Cool. Just mechanic fight right here. Just keeping your pet alive. Same thing with the Razor Eyes. Jump up. Disengage. You know, Keep min pet on your pet at all times throughout this entire fight. I kick Frostbolt there just to get my pet back up to 100% health because there's nothing else to kick just yet that comes around like 50% health alright we got Razor Ass again we're just jumping up and then we're disengaging we can harpoon right to him get to him as fast as possible because he is going to soon start channeling an ability that you do need to interrupt I don't remember when it is exactly but we're doing just fine here. So this is the arcane phase coming up soon. He's going to pop up a bunch of mirror images. And we have to kill one of these mirror images and jump in it and look on our mini map. And we're going to see a yellow dot up there. And I think that is from us being a hunter and ups being able to track hidden I'm not sure but there's a little circle over there and you throw a flare right on top of him and it'll bring him out 
and then you just run to him. Arcane Barrage does nothing. The Shadow Barrage, you're just going to, you know, cut through it. Uh, don't get hit by it. It doesn't hit too hard, but you want to take as little as damage as possible. I'm pretty sure it knocks you back. I do get hit a few times. This is the draw power that you do want to interrupt as fa soon as possible. If you don't have your interrupt up, then you can stun the boss as well. Uh, but here, you just want to make sure your pet's getting healed. Constantly have them healed. Throw up dots. Have just constant damage at all times. Keep your dots up. Draw power. Interrupt it. Well, you know, it's really simple for the first phase. The entire fight is really simple. Just, just the second phase is the D big DPS check. Here we go. We kill the guy, the guy really fast as soon as possible. We look on the map. We see it's to the right over there. So we can just get over there. Harpoon over there because we do not want to get hit by the prismatic shock. We do not want to be out of the circle while that goes off because it will hurt very bad. And <laughs> well, it's a way to it's a way to die to die. <laughs> this barrage we just you know walk run around. Don't get hit by it. Frostbolt. Keep men to pet up. Got razor ass. We just jump over and disengage like always. We do want to get over to that boss as fast as possible. Just take your time on this. Don't don't use all your cooldowns. Um, you don't want to use hero. I forgot to mention you do not want to use hero at the beginning at all because this first phase is not. You don't need it and. Um, Try to DPS check it all. Just jump over this razor eyes. And uh, the second phase, you definitely need hero. You definitely need all your cooldowns. You can use coordinated assault about twice in this first phase here because it's about five minutes and coordinated assault is on a two minute cooldown. Now, definitely don't judge this survival gameplay because I don't play survival at all. <laughs> I'm definitely going to start playing it once I get my weapon, but. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just. <laughs> Not used to it. So not the best rotation <laughs> by any means, so if I can do it then well you surely can too. Beware. It just took the gear I think for me. Which kinda sucks. The other ones I'd I haven't done the marksmanship one yet. I'm going to do that, try to make a video on that one. Beastmaster Hunter one was fairly difficult. I did it in Shadowlands gear though. It is all about the mechanics for that one. Unlike this one, which is a DPS check, like I said a thousand times already. We just killed the prism guy, don't get hit by the prismatic shock. We look and see that he's on the left side. We just harpoon over there and we flare him out. Well, you see there is a little circle where he is in that area, so we just flare that area. Alright, so he, get, he um, I think it's like 15% health is whenever he's, we can't attack him anymore. Interrupt draw power as soon as possible. Alright, so this is the interface. This is uh, in between phases. And he's pretty much just going to walk over here, throw a book down, and summon the second phase guy. And uh, actually, don't do it right in this video. I mean, in this fight, but you want to back up to the wall as soon as you get there because he drops the circle. You'll see. And you don't want him to drop it in the middle <laughs> like he, I did here. And I heard you can stun him and it'll give you an extra 5 seconds before he drops the circle. I don't think I did it right. <laughs> I think I stunned too late. But you're, he's pretty much going to summon a circle right here. And it's going to spread out your entire room. And you, you know, you have, if you stand in that, you pretty much die. It kills you very fast, so you want to stand on the edge. And whenever he does a seed of darkness, you're going to run it as far away as possible. Well, keep on doing damage. You want to do as much damage as possible the, the entire time. Throw down a slow trap and throw a binding shot down. I don't know how the binding shot didn't hit those two. It kind of annoyed me. <laughs> uh, but the binding shot really comes in helpfully here. Helps out a whole lot. And then just keep that damage up and go as slow as possible around. This is where you're going to turn your uh, pet's automatic taunt off, by the way, at the 
beginning of the second phase I didn't mention. Plot this is pretty much all it is. You just walk around in the big circle. You know, I stepped in the darkness right there for a minute and instantly went to 60%, went to 30%, so I guess it takes like 30% each uh, second you're in it. You want to stay on the edge of it though, because you will see how close I do come to not winning this fight, and you see how much how much gear I have. I spent like 200-300k on this gear. <laughs> Well, which is not much, I guess, since I can do carries. Just run away, though, whenever he summons these little guys, throw a binding shot down, and you can see, now that they're all in a binding shot, they're really no threat, because they kind of just they fall over really easily. Plus, so without binding shot, I was finding it really troublesome. With it, I found it way easier. I shouldn't have popped that. I didn't mean to use that range ability. I don't even know what the name of it's called. Oh, but you do want to use coordinated assault as, as much as possible on this guy, just get him down. Well, like I said, I'm not a not too experienced at survival. And I was trying to go through all these mechanics at the same time, so it was just a little bit of... <laughs> a lot of disgusting gameplay looking. <laughs> well, you know, just keep on doing damage though. Got Seed of Darkness, so you run as far away as possible. He's gonna summon those three little odds again. Or oh, just Binding Shot, Slow Trap, and save your bombs for uh, this little phase right here. At least one of them, so you can A AOE them down as fast as possible, so you can get back on that boss. You remember, you do want to keep on the, on the edge. Uh, you can't fall off of this, so you can just back up to it. And like you see, I walk into the uh, darkness there again and just <laughs> instantly drop to 30%. It can go from 100% to, uh, you know, you queuing back up within a matter of two seconds if you stand on that dark stuff. Let's see, we have 25% health, and see how close we're getting in. I have that ability, that range ability macroed into something and I just kept pressing it on accident <laughs> on the wrong dumbs. I needed to save it for when uh, I'm running away so I could just keep doing damage to him. Oh, and you see I'm at 30% health and a very small area. I don't know how he doesn't get binding shotted. <laughs> But yeah, I did try this in Shadowlands gear a lot, a few times, and it did not go too well. I just could not get anywhere close to the damage. I think I was doing like five to 600 damage a second, and <laughs> compared to this, I'm doing a thousand damage a second, so it's almost doubling it. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big difference with the gear. <clears throat> and if you, uh, Want to learn how to make gold as a hunter and you're geared by you know, your PvP. If you do PvP, obviously you can you know, subscribe to the channel. Like that's what I focus on is hunter PvP content arena wise. And then we do we defeat it. And I can I show I made like a million gold in a few hours just from carrying people and coaching people pretty much. And you can tell them what to do. I uh, pretty much have like a strategy for it for certain healers. It's really easy. I might make a video on it. Probably make a video on it soon. Hope you guys make some gold. But yeah, that was the fight. And then he just opens up a portal to this place. I don't really know the storyline and all, but I remember him being here. And then you can go downstairs and there's a toy you can buy. If you want to, it turns you into a night elf. It's one of my favorite toys in the game, actually. I've had it for a minute. But yeah, if you found this video helpful, drop a like if you like hunter content. I did make a Beast Mastery Hunter guide on uh, the Mage Tower. It was not too easy. It was definitely not a damage check. It was definitely more of a... Um, well, 
whatever a mechanic check so if you're having trouble on it you can go to the beast mastery one and check that out and maybe you can do that one if you can't buy the gear you don't have the gold or you just don't want to go farm it but anyways that's gonna wrap it up thanks for watching later